Aloha, welcome to the Condo Insider Show. I am your host, Cheryl Franklin. And today we're going to talk about the exciting subject of the new vacation rental law, which is very, um, there's a lot of buzz around that, especially Hawaii being a state of tourism, if you will. And with me today, my guest is Jane Sugimura, my favorite guest, as a matter of fact. She's kind of an expert on, on everything. So I, I always enjoy chatting with, with you, Jane. Welcome. Nice to be here. Yeah. So let's just dive right in. Um, Bill 89 is the new uh, vacation rental law. Yes. And it basically stipulates um, that if you are renting out your unit for 30 days or less, you must ob obtain a city permit. And they're starting to enforce that. That's what the, the new um, law is about. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Um, I think they're only going to issue 1,700 permits is what I, what I heard. Um, how much um, how much can you kind of share with us that you well, know? Well, you know, my stuff? understanding, you know, because I was at some of the preliminary hearings at City Council on, on this bill, and, you know, it wouldn't apply if your association's governing documents have a provision in there that does not allow for short-term rentals. Not and most or no? A lot, of, uh, a, a lot of condominiums do have that. And the way it, it, it reads is, is, is in that section about use, in the, either in the bylaws or in the declaration. It'll say that the units can be used only for residential purposes, which means that you cannot operate a business out of that unit, and that uh, any uh, uh, rentals uh, less than 30 days, or sometimes some, some, some provisions say 60 and 90 days. Oh, wow. 60 wow. or 90 days are not permitted. And, and I know of one condominium that is right on the cusp of Waikiki, Waikiki. and they have a 60-day limitation. And, 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 a, and a friend of mine used to be a board president of that condominium, and they used to have on-site security people. And, you know, when you have on-site staff, they, they kind of know, they the, know, they, they yeah. know the residents. And if they saw somebody come in with a suitcase, they would politely go up to that person and ask them what unit they were staying in and how long they were staying. And if, if they said, oh, I'm only here for a weekend, and then they would you know, turn it into the office and the office would check and they, they, the owner would get a notice. Yeah. What, what is this person doing here? We have this rule. And they were very strictly enforcing. And this was even before, the, years before, before this. And so, you know, it would, it's always been an issue in buildings around Waikiki because that's right in the tourist, you know, resort area. And let me tell you why some of those uh, condominiums have that provision. Many, many, many years ago, when they introduced timeshare into, into the law in Hawaii, a lot of condominiums, especially in Waikiki, were very concerned about security. If you were an owner occupant, you would not want your next door neighbor to be changing every week. Right. right. You, you right. wouldn't know if they were supposed to be there or they're not supposed yeah. to be there. And so that's why a lot of condominiums had their bylaws changed or written so that you to per, not permit to prevent that the short term rentals yeah. for security reasons only. And a lot, I know a lot of uh, buildings in Waikiki because they were older, had their bylaws amended to include that provision. And, and when they did adopt the timeshare law, they kind of limited to the resort area. In other words, you can't do timeshare in in uh, Hawaii Kai yeah. Or, yeah. or or Pearl City. You can only do it in a resort area right. in certain you know neighborhoods, zones, or things like that. Yeah. yeah. But I think fast forward what ten years, ten twenty years since that, or fifteen years maybe. With the onset of VB VRBO vacation rental by owner. Many owners see it as a very uh, lucrative way to supplement their income. And unfortunately, even though, like you stated a moment ago, it's written in their governing documents that they're not supposed to um, rent out their unit to short-term tenants, it's, it's being done, right? It's and being done, and, and the yeah. associations have to deal with the issue of enforcement. Yeah. And it's usually the, it's usually the owner-occupant or the long-term tenant 
who notices that the next door neighbor changes Keeps every, changing, uh, every yeah. week. Yeah. There's somebody different in the unit next door. Yeah. And then they complain, either that or the, the guest, the transient guest, needs a key and they and you know all these units now have fobs and so they go to the security guard for another fob not knowing that those fobs are because they, you know they allow people into the building and into right. the unit and sometimes control the elevators they're not just issued yeah. just because you lost them i mean you have to go through a process yeah and so the the question comes well are you a owner and you know, it, it, and that's how the inquiry starts. And they'll say, "Oh no, I'm only here for like a week." And mm -hmm. and then and then you know, then that is the issue then has to go to the board if they have a, a a restriction, a prohibition like that. And not only are there prohibitions in condo documents in Kakaako, you know, where all those condominiums yeah. Yeah. Th that are within the jurisdiction, I guess, of HCDA, they have rules that uh, prohibit. prohibit short-term rentals in that neighborhood. Right? I didn't know that. Yeah. I live in that neighborhood. I right. do know so, that. so that means if you live in Kaka'ako yeah. and you ha live in a building yeah. that has the, you know, the, yeah. the limitation, you can't do it in the building. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, now the city's getting involved and they're going to start enforcing, you know, enforcing Bill 89. Um, and it's my understanding that if you're going to rent out your unit and you're not in violation of your documents, and you have not filed for a permit, the city is even even going so far as to monitor advertising sites right. just to, to identify who the violators are. And I understand that maybe, maybe earlier in the month of July, they sent out 5,000 potential notices. Um, and since they started doing that, they noticed a decline of about 18% of um, advertising for vacation rentals um, that were possibly in violation of not having permits to do so. Right, and you know, the, the fact that, you know, you might own, you might be an investor owner, it doesn't mean you can't rent your unit. It just means you can't do it, you know, the, the weekend or, you know, right. one week. Right. You, you can go in and rent Long for six, term. six yeah. months. Six months to a year. Right. Yeah, 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 so it's interesting. It's, it's very interesting. And then, like you said earlier, about not being able to rent in or rent your unit out short term in areas like Hawaii Kai, that's where I understand Bill 85 came into play because um, residents or neighbors were complaining about the very thing that they don't want their neighbors to keep changing because you're renting out a unit and it becomes very taxing on the community. Right, because, you know, you know it, not only is it a security Mm -hmm. risk. But, you know, when, when, when you have transient, you know, renters, I mean, they're here on vacation. I mean, they don't live here. They don't work here. And they're here to relax and to party. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, so they don't really care if you, the next door neighbor, have to get up at six o'clock in the morning to go to work. Right. Yeah. You know, that's not their concern. Yeah. And because, and, and because a lot of these units are in Waikiki and they figure, oh, well, there's lots of hotels and lots of tourists. And this is not a concern. We can party, party, how, you know, however we want to. And I guess that's that is a concern that seems to, you know, be affecting uh, a lot of the people who have to live in the, the buildings where these transient renters come. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's my understanding, understanding also that the fines are going to be pretty steep if you run out your unit and you don't have a permit. I understand they can be as high as ten thousand dollars a day. Even. Yes, so. and I think I think it's necessary to uh, to stop the illegal use. I mean, there's there. I mean, it, it doesn't prevent you as an investor owner to rent your unit, like I said, uh, to somebody who's not a short term renter. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so it doesn't prevent you from making uh, using your unit to to earn money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah. just can't do, you just can't uh, violate the governing documents of the building, which apply to everybody in the building. And, you know, you, you, you have to comply uh, with uh, city and state and county ordinances. I mean, just that simple. it's just that simple. I yeah. mean, and, and the state, I mean, the government can, you know, regulate uh, the, the, these types of uses. And I think... Um, 
Uh, you know, it, it's in response to maybe the, 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 the public's concern. Like when Timeshare came up, it was very clear that it, they didn't want it to be, in other words, you couldn't do transient, you couldn't do Timeshare statewide. They, the, the public Period. said, no, you have to restrict it. It was like, not in my neighborhood. We yeah. don't want it in my, you know. Mm. And, and so, so they, they restricted it only to resort areas where there were already tourists. Right, staying in hotels and, yeah. and whatnot, and and that they f they they felt was a reasonable accommodation, you know, for people who want who wanted to to do timeshares, operate timeshares, and you know, for uh, for the general public because that way the general public would know that they wouldn't have timeshares in their building, right? Because that would affect, I think, for 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 a lot of the residential condominiums. That's going to affect the value of your building. Absolutely. If Absolutely. you if you had to you know sell, I mean, I, I it's not very marketable if your kind of your residential condominium was a timeshare. Right. Yeah. You know, if somebody had a family or maybe a couple just starting out, I doubt if they'd want to buy a yeah. unit in that building. Yeah. You know. So and yeah, as it stands right now, um, even just having uh, renters in your your building affects. You know, it comes into play when you're trying to buy and sell the mm -hmm. owner occupancy and things of that nature. So if you take it a step further and now it's operating as a timeshare or temporary, you know, housing or vacation rentals, that brings the value down even more. Right. So it becomes even more problematic. Yep. I understand there is an association that's not very happy about this bill. The Hawaii Vacation Rent Rental Owners Association, they filed a lawsuit. Um, uh, saying that this this law violates certain constitutional clauses, and they were hoping that as they filed this lawsuit, that it would put a temporary stay, uh, so that the city wouldn't enforce the law. But I understand the mayor said, "Nope, we're going we're going to enforce it." And I think the the reason for that lawsuit, and I'm not really familiar with it. I think they're saying that one side of the street allows it, and they're on the other side of the street, oh. right? So. Because in Waikiki, there is a resort, what they call a resort area. There are actually lines. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Then so anybody on the Makai side, the, the ocean side, right. uh, you know, can do them. Right. And I think it's the Banyan. Uh, the, yep, that's the one. Uh, they're yeah. on the other side of the street. Right. And so they're not in that resort, so-called resort area. And so they're being banned. And that's what they're saying. If, if the people across the street can do it, then why can't we? Right. And I'm not really sure about the issues, you know, in that. Um, in the, the line? Yeah. Yeah. Or how and, you know, so I guess, you know, the issue is, being, is going to be whether or not the government can draw that line and say, okay, anybody on this side of the street can do it and people on this side of the street cannot. Yeah. But that's the issue, in, I think, in that case. In that case. case, yeah. Well, in the interim, they're definitely going to start enforcement. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if they have already. Uh, the, the mayor I, I seemed, was, yeah, the, 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 what I've read in the newspaper and seen in his press releases, I mean, he seems pretty adamant that he is going to enforce it. I, I think mainly, be, and, and, you know, I was at those hearings. I was at those hearings. And the people, fun. And, you know, <laughs> and, and they were very long. And there's only, there's certain areas of the island in Oahu that were, that seemed to draw, mm. you know, people. And. And one of the areas was Waikiki, mm. because right now it's, it's kind of iffy because some buildings can do it and some buildings cannot. Uh. Some buildings, you know, have the, uh, the prohibition in their uh, co co governing documents and some are in Kaka'ako. Yeah. And so, you know, so, so you know, so, so it goes, yeah. it, it's going to be a while before, you know, uh, people... It, it settles in and, you know, people are going to feel comfortable with working with the law. Yeah, well, I have a feeling it's, it's, it's going to uh, evolve, you know, as we move along and, and things come up. And, you know, as with all laws, they progress yeah. <laughs> as society changes. But this is a good time for a break. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with more. Thanks to our Think Tech underwriters and grantors. The Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Mun Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, 
the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Welcome back to the Condo Insider Show. Uh, right before the break, we've been discussing the new vacation rental law. Um, but we want to segue um, that conversation into a very specific um, instance with a, an association called Waikiki Lanai. And they've done some very uh, unique um, maneuvering, if you will, when it comes to the law and vacation rentals and things like that. And, and Jane, I'll let you kind of elaborate on this. And I'm not sure, you know, where it yeah, will evolve from in, here. And Waikiki, Waikiki Lanai is a condominium, okay? And, and we're all familiar with condominiums. And, and in this condominium, what you have is you have owner occupants who own the units and live in the units. And you have investor owners who rent their units out to long-term renters. Okay. And you have investor owners who are currently doing short-term rentals. And, uh, and, and I, I, I'm not sure where they are, whether they're in that resort area so that they're, they would be okay if they got a permit. Mm. Or, or, you know, but they may have to apply for a permit. But anyway. So you have three owners in a building with different interests, right? One is an owner occupant. The other one is an investor owner with long-term renters. And the third group is investors who do short-term rentals. Isn't that unusual? Not necessarily, uh, because if you're, if you're an investor owner, you can choose to do long-term rentals or short-term term rentals. If the your, condominium, your documents it's a documents allow. allow. And in this case, I'm not sure if their documents allow for it. I'm, okay. I'm, I, I, somebody told me that they have a 30-day prohibition. So if they have a 30-day prohibition, then the short-term rentals are prohibited by the governing documents. But let's assume there's no prohibition, okay? So then it would mean that if they're in the resort area, they have to apply for a license under the new law. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they would be uh, prohibited from doing this, uh, doing the rental. The issues, the, the, and the issue kind of centers on what is a common expense. And those of us who deal with condos, we know what a common expense is. You live in a condominium, that means there are certain expenses that are common. That's why they're called common. Everybody in the building pays. Right. Like electricity, water and sewage. Insurance for the building, right. staff, operational, op op versus, oper yeah. operational uh, expenses security, to keep yeah. you know, the mm -hmm. security staff. Yeah. All of this is paid for out of maintenance fees. And in this situation, I, you know, and, and this is, and I'm hearing that the board, and you know, the board, the board is basically, I'm not sure if it's seven or nine members, but the statute, the condominium statute says that a board member has a fiduciary duty to the association. That means if you're a 100-unit building and you're a board member, you have a fiduciary to 100 people, 100 owners, right? That means that when you make a decision that you can't act in your own self-interest, you got to think of the group. Which is hard for some to do. Right. I mean, We've some, seen it. Yeah, We've and, seen and, it. And, and some board members go in there, they got an agenda, and exactly. that's what they you know, push. Yeah. And what I'm hearing is that this board, for some reason, has approved something, and, 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 and I'm told that there's a majority of this board uh, are investors with short, who want to do short-term rentals or mm. are doing short-term rentals. And so there was a motion, I think, to approve a front desk operation, which would only benefit short-term uh, you know, short rentals. That means if you're an owner-occupant, 
you would get zero benefit from a front desk from operator. A, yeah, yeah. And if you were a, an investor owner who had a long-term tenant, you would also get zero benefit from a front desk operation, right. Right? right? And so it's like, so how come our maintenance fees are being used to finance or pay for a front desk operation when we don't benefit? Right. See, that's the that's the issue, and and if it's a, if there if it if it is only benefiting a small portion, or less than one hundred percent of the unit owners, it's not a common expense, and you can't use association money. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't. The who's small, on the board. law is real clear. You can't use association money to pay for something that's not a common expense. Okay, so it doesn't matter the vote on the board. No. What matters is the stipulation towards. Um, and, 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 you know, this is not unusual because places in, in, in I think, Aston Hotel, who manages some uh, condominiums in the right. resort areas, they set up a hotel pool. Okay, so let's say you have a 100-unit condominium and 50 units are owner-occupied and 50 units are investor-owned, whether it's short-term, long-term. Okay, and so if you want to, and then, uh, so, so the, the, uh, Aston will set up a pool, a whole thing, what they call a hotel pool. So if you're, the, uh, if you're an investor owner uh, who wants to do short-term rentals, then you would pay a premium, and you would pay that extra money to Aston to do the front desk. And the front desk would only now take care. Now, that seems fair. And you would, you would also pay the maintenance fee to the association, yeah. just like everybody else in the yeah. building, yeah. to pay for the insurance, the upkeep, the right. grounds, whatever, right. okay? The water, sewage, electricity. So they're kind of showing you how it should be done. Right. And so, yeah. with, with, and on the neighbor islands, Kihei, you have a lot of transient, uh, you know, uh, vacation rentals in Kihei. Right. Yeah. And in, over there, too, they set up a hotel pool, and you, you, can, you can, you know, pay into it. But if, let's say mm. you're an investor owner, and you rent out your unit, but maybe it's not short term. Maybe you do six month leases. So you don't, you know, you, you, you don't have a need for a front desk. You don't have a need for the cleaning services. Because usually if you have a hotel pool, you, 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 you have um, staff who will go in and clean the unit after the guests leave, right? And so if you have a, a, a person who's in there for a long term renter, uh, maybe they're in there for six month leases, you may not benefit from a front desk operation or from the cleaning, so you won't want to pay into the pool. Into the pool, yeah. But that's your choice. Right. But if you decide to pay into the pool, you get the front desk services and the cleaning services and security or whatever services the hotel pool offers, but you pay extra. And so you're paying two fees. And so that's how it's typically done. You know, so it's not like you, know, you have to reinvent the system. There is a system already in place. But what is happening in Waikiki Lanai is if they are, in fact, using association, association funds, funds to pay for that front desk, and, and, and they're doing this. And they, they can be sued. They can be sued yeah. by the owners. By of, the owners. If you are an owner-occupant or an investor owner, you know, who has a, a long-term tenant who doesn't need those services, but their money is being used to pay for it, they can sue, they can and, sue. And, and those board members who voted for it, I mean, they might be personally, personally liable. Personally liable. And, yeah. you know, when, when, when people, when, the, when a board acts, right now the condominium law says the minutes shall reflect the eyes and the nays. So we know who voted yes and who voted no, right? And so if there is a lawsuit, those people who voted to allow association funds to be used for no, non-common expenses, they could be held personally liable for that money. I'm surprised they don't know that. It's probably because there's something called the business judgment rule, and yeah. that is something that's also in the statute for boards of directors. And, and the business judgment rule is real simple. It says if you don't know, you need to ask and get a, and a written uh, opinion. Right. Okay? Right. It means that... If it's a legal issue, you should have a legal opinion. Right. And it should not be from your, it can be from your association council. In fact, it should be from, it should be. from yeah. the association council saying that you can do this. Yeah. And, 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 you know, one of the other things I heard about uh, the Waikiki Lanai's is that they, uh, they the, the, the current board 
voted to use association funds to challenge the city ordinance. Oi, it's worse. <laughs> and, I, and, I mean, and, and the basis for the challenge would be that it affects property values of the condominium, except that if you were an owner-occupant, it doesn't benefit, that lawsuit does not benefit you at all. Right. And there are owner-occupants in that building. And so, 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 you know, and if these investor owners, you know, who want to do short-term rentals, they want to file a lawsuit, they can get together can and put some money together and file their own lawsuit. Yeah. There's nothing to prevent that. Right. But by and the that would be very appropriate for them to do that. Yeah, yeah. But you cannot use association funds because association funds benefit 100% of Everybody. Right. To, you, you, it, and that's the test. You look at an expense and say, does that benefit everybody in the building? Right. And if it doesn't, then it's not a common expense. Right. And you need to be able to parcel it out. Yeah, that's all the more reason I believe that boards really need to take advantage of educational courses and seminars like with HCCA and things of that nature because quite often they get on the board and they believe they have voting power to do basically anything. Right. Um, and unless, you know, they're educated, and you know. Every decision that a board member makes, they have to understand that they have a fiduciary duty. Right. They are acting for everybody in the building. They can't, it's not like, oh, well, I don't like that. Right. So I don't like that contractor. And so, I, you know, I'm going to, you know, not vote for him. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you're 100% right. But I think both of us working in this industry for X number of years, we've seen it. We've seen boards behave poorly. And, and, make and, and that's why, you know, Sue Savio, who this represents very most, busy. Yeah, who, <laughs> who represents most of the, uh, you know, she's the insurance person who represents most of the associations. She says, and she, you know, is not shy about it, Hawaii has got the most claims of any state in the country. Yep. We're the smallest state, but we have the, the most, most and the largest DNO claims. DNO claims. And that's because you have boards acting badly. Yep. And it's not because they're doing it out of meanness. They're doing it because they don't know. Exactly. exactly. They, they don't know any better. And th what they don't understand is that th ignorance is not going to be an excuse. If, yeah, you get it's sued, not bliss. if you get sued, it's not an excuse yeah. that you didn't know right. what the law says. Because the law is very plain. If they want to read it, it's in it, 514B. Uh, you know, 514B in, in, in the st uh, statute is, is very clear. Yeah. And, and, and they, they have to go to classes like for HCCA, yeah. uh, 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 CAI, yeah. and, and Associa has classes, board yeah. training, and Hawaiiana. There's yeah. all these classes that they have could, to go to. Yeah, we could go on, and I have a feeling we're going to continue the, this subject into the future because it's steadily evolving. So I want to thank you for tuning in with us. Tune in again. We'll continue the conversation. Aloha. Thank you.